Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! You as a white person need to educate them why we say Black Lives Matter. Because black people are killed disproportionately way more than white people. You need to educate other white people, okay? It is not okay that black lives are being extinguished without an outrage. Jason Washington, non-indictment. This is after we told them that uh, the campus police did not need to be armed. They did it anyway. We've been protesting for years, so we got a problem. And um, they're gonna have to answer to the people, so we're trying to make the people's voice as loud and strong as possible so that they don't get away with it one more time. Lives are under attack. What do we do? These cops killed the good guy. It makes no sense. We are not leaving. He was wrongfully murdered. Um, he was trying to de-escalate a situation and from what I've seen on the video, uh, when they got there, shit happened. We are not leaving! We are not leaving! We are not leaving! We are not leaving! This RPSU! This RPSU! This RPSU! This RPSU! This RPSU! Show. Marcus Ward show. Marcus Ward. He's mad funny. He's a funny guy. Wow. Marcus Ward. Like him, likes personality. He's a really nice guy. But gosh, he asks some pointy questions. I respect him. I respect what he does, what he's doing. This Marcus Ward show is... He, he's bringing light to a lot of very special issues. And, marginalized people. I felt very comfortable with him. I gotta say that, the guy is really great. He's adorable. Me llamo Alberto, yo soy de El Salvador, y tú estás mirando el Marcus Ward Show. Jason Washington was shot and killed by Portland State University policemen June 29, 2018. Witnesses say he was trying to break up an escalating fight that involves his friend Jeremy Wilkinson and another group of men inside a sports bar in Portland, Oregon. Body camera footage show once officers James Dewey and Sean McKenzie arriving on the scene in the midst of the drunken brawl. Washington, who was a Navy veteran and held a concealed handgun license, was forcefully grabbed by the arm and demanded to back up. During the commotion, Washington fell to the ground and the gun he was carrying fell onto the sidewalk. The gun actually didn't belong to him though. Wilkinson says he told Jason to hold his gun because he did not want to make a poor decision during the fight. Once both parties left the bar, Washington placed the gun and holster on his right hip. Video shows a pistol holster to Washington's hip before the fall and the gun in his hand as he gets back on his feet while officers James Dewey and Sean McKenzie yell for him to drop the firearm. Seconds later, they open fire. Jason Washington was shot 17 times according to a medical examiner report hit nine times, including in his chest, back, abdomen, and thigh. Jason was just 45 years old. Jason.
person is dead today because he was a black man picking up a weapon when police showed up. Do you think if he had been any other color, the police would have at least stopped to ask a question or two? Police killing black men that has overtaken our country and it's got to stop right now. Yeah. We live in a city with a 6% black population, yet 54% of Portland's gang enforcement unit stops are of African Americans. Do the math. That makes no sense. Yes. No. Where is the outrage when our children are being targeted, arrested, prosecuted, by all the government entities that are supposed to keep them safe. I'm outraged. I'm outraged. How did you shoot a man six times? Nine. Nine. Nine, Nine. Nine times. Because you know when you're shooting black people, you got to shoot them over and over and over again. Because we're like, we got that superpower, right? You both do. Well, because they just ran up and just saw a black man picking up a gun and just decided he's got to be the criminal. They're trigger happy. Portland State University had the opportunity to listen to their students. We Weapons and students don't mix. We are not safe on this campus. And I want to repeat, we are not safe on this campus. We killed a member of our community. And I'm so ashamed that our university can only speak to you through lawyers and through statements that, that aren't for humans. The only people that wanted to arm police on Portland State University campus was the Board of Trustees. They was the only people. They, the blood, is on the hands yeah. of Portland State yeah. University yeah. Board of Trustees. Yeah. So to PSU's administration, the Board of Trustees and President Ramon Shorshi, if you care about your students, if you care about your community, if you care about us, you will disarm PSU. You are in front of campus public safety. There's a police officer right behind you. Are you in fear? I'm angry, I'm outraged. And I want them to uh, listen to the demands that we have. Which are? What are the to, demands? To disarm the campus police at Portland State. The officers, James Dewey and Sean McKenzie, the people who murdered Jason Washington, um, be fired, and that there be a permanent memorial erected to Jason Washington on campus, and that the process of creating that memorial be led by his family. Do you consider this a murder? Absolutely. When somebody kills somebody who wasn't doing anything wrong, um, and gets away with it, that's murder. If the police are meant to uphold the law, which I question, like inherently, what like what is legal? But if they're meant to uphold the law, and they have to reconcile that people are legally allowed to carry guns. So somebody having a gun, when you walk up, when they're not not touching it, not pulling it out, not using it, not being not being um, violent, not being aggressive, trying to de-escalate, not fighting anybody. That's, then that's not a valid excuse. And the fact that they got off without any punishment, I'm not surprised at all. So do you but believe that it was racially few? Absolutely. Of course. In a way, I think it was, but that's just me. That's just me and my opinion. Um, it shouldn't matter about the color, but the thing is, um, most shootings that I've seen and read about were uh, people of color. Do you think that there will be a change, or do you feel that there is a possibility that we will continue to have these justice rallies? I've talked to high school students who um, have said that Disarm PSU had inspired them at their own schools to do anti-police violence work. What's your words for the, the family of Mr. Um, Washington? I, I've, I've been speaking with them and I just always tell them that anything they need, we want to offer them. And you're going to camp out? We intend to stay here until we see justice, until we see that so they have attention to move forward. justice will manifest within a few days? Um, I don't know. There's no, I mean, this is an escalation that we haven't done before. 
there is no way to know, um, which is why we have to say indefinitely. We can't, we can't lay out and say, we know that we'll push them this far in this many days. We all should feel like we've been shot. Because at some point, you might be shot. And if your skin is a little bit darker, the odds of you getting shot, guess what? They just went up. And it ain't just black people. It's brown people. The vast majority of those people that did the shooting were white policemen. And behind me are three campus policemen. And out of those three, two of them are black men. Why aren't all of them up here? Why aren't there all the white cops up here? Why are there three cops and two out of three are black? It doesn't look good. It's not a good look, PSU. I just want you to know it's not a good look. I'm not the only one that noticed that because a woman behind me said I was wondering the same thing. So don't think just because I'm a black man that I'm on this black tip. I ain't on the black tip. I agree with I'm on a social justice tip. I'm embarrassed this morning. Some of you ain't gonna like what I'm about to say because two out of the three cops are black but the vast majority of people here are white. I don't know where my brothers and my sisters are this morning that they can be okay not coming downtown in this city and supporting a family who lost a loved one. Jason was a provider, a protector, a husband, a father, a papa, a friend, a veteran, and he was our everything. He was violently and needlessly taken from us. If you knew Jason, you know what I'm saying to be the truth. When he walked into a room, he lit it up. With his smile, his personality, his friendliness, he died protecting his friend. He was the best man that I have ever known. And I will miss him every second of my life until I meet him again in eternity. He respected law. He respected guns. He was concealed weapons permit carrier, which is why he had the right to have that gun on him that they shot him over. And he was the best dad and husband and grandfather and friend. And I know we can't get him back, but do I really wish we could? Because that should never happen to anyone. It's, it hurts so bad. It hurts to lose someone, but it's so much worse okay, that he was taken right. over nothing. He did what he always did, which was protect his friends. And that's all he wanted to do. And then he was shot in the back. I wanted to give the benefit of doubt to police officers also. But you can't. You target minorities. This is so obvious with my father being the kind of person that he was. All he wanted to do was help people. He did everything right. And he was still shot. I caught up with the family after the rally and asked them if they felt Jason Washington would do anything differently had he known the outcome. He still would have been there for Jeremy. He never would have left him. Yeah, he would never leave his friend. He would never leave his friend. To How did you guys find out? He didn't come home and I drove over to where I found or I did a, I, I find, her, find her friend. And I drove there and drove up to the scene. And the so you knew before the police? No, I'm no. I came. It was like three thirty. Like police scene. and the police scene was there, and they came up to me and asked me who I was looking for, and then they like pushed me to the side, like, and basically had two police officers stand with me, and I didn't know why, what was going on. They would not tell me, and then it took, you know, I called all my my kids, my family. They said, you know, call your family, someone to come down here, and you know, at that point, your heart sinks. Like it's obviously. Yeah. Did you have a feeling? Feeling something was off. Did you have a feeling that this was Absolutely not? I would have never in a million years. No, my husband respects the law. I mean, we would walk to Starbucks 
downtown across from the police station every morning and there'd be police policemen in there and he would walk up to all of them and shake their hand and say thank you for your service. The last thing I actually said was do you want me to come pick you up? And he said, nope, we're at the cheerful, cheerful now, I'll be home soon. I said, and then I texted him again, said, when are you going to be home? And he said, soon. That was his last words to me. If you could say something to him now, what would you say? Sorry, um, Stay home. Yeah, Don't go anywhere. Really and so what about Don't you? Trust the police. He didn't even know they were there. I mean. What about you as his daughters? What would you say to your dad? Well, what was the last thing you said to your, your dad? I was texting him all day. We were just talking about different scenarios that have happened, which is weird. Like, I even said, like, that day about one of the kids had been shot by a police officer. And so we were talking about different things and then we stopped texting him. But I wish he would have stayed home.